All right, part two of urinary um, disease processes. The first thing we're going to look is at is urinary incontinence. Urinary incontinence, there's many types we're going to find out. Overflow, there could be a urethral block. Re or stress incontinence, there's a relaxed pelvic floor. Increased abdominal pressure can cause stress incontinence. Or urge incontinence, as you can see here, is an oversensitivity from infection or neurological disorder. But really, when we're looking at urinary incontinence, you're going to see it as temporary or permanent loss of bladder control. And there's many reasons or different types. So the types, as we said, is stress. Stress is like a dribble, and it's weakened pelvic muscles. And also, if you've been pregnant, uh, you may have had that big pressure on the top of your belly. gives you that um, type of stress incontinence called. Happens when you exercise, sneeze, cough in the later stages of pregnancy, lifting, overweight, aging, and it is mainly women. Can happen in males, but mainly women. And it is a dribble, less than 50 cc. Urge incontinence is you have to go now, lots of urine before you reach the toilet. And often it's due to um, urinary tract infection, nervous system dysfunctions, um, cancer of the bladder or an enlarged prostate. Overflow, and by the way, urge incontinence, you just let her go. Overflow incontinence is leaking and the bladder is full and the bladder doesn't feel empty at any time. Usually it's a slow to a dribble flow and diabetes, enlarged prostate, or meds can cause this. Functional incontinence, the control of a bladder, but you're not able to hold it until you reach the toilet. As I said, we all have functional incontinence. And we can't find the restroom, immobile, call bell um, isn't answered, confusion, disorientation. As I said, I had a girlfriend who um, had a full-on peep snow suit and couldn't get it down when they were out snowmobiling. Of course, you get functional incontinence. Reflex incontinence is the loss of urine at regular times, but the person's not aware that he or she has to void. And nervous system dysfunctions and injuries are usually some of the causes for that type of incontinence. Think about if you were incontinent of urine or even of stool, and we'll talk about that later, but how it affects you as an individual. Psychologically, emotionally, and socially, it would be very difficult on you. You'd also be embarrassed. You'd be very conscious of odor, wet clothes. Um, you don't want to go out because people may laugh at you. You may become inactive. I may have low self-esteem. I may also choose not to drink, which then makes my incontinence worse. Incontinence worse. However, because then I become dehydrated. So safety we need to be aware of when we're looking after our clients. There's a risk for falling. They're trying to get to the restroom in time, and then urine wets the floor. Wet floors are common causes for falls in your elderly people. Skin breakdown, it's the open area for infection. Of course, something wet against the skin will cause that skin breakdown. So products are quite effective right now for urinary incontinence. Catching urine specimens, always an interesting thing to do. Random, we just use that for a urinalysis. Um, it's just uh, urinalysis casting usually, and it's a random you just, um, usually you try to get a clean catch, which means you wash the perineum and then try to get a clean catch. It may be collected any time during the day. A midstream, you clean the perineal area. The voiding is started, then stopped midway, and the urine is collected in a sterile container. Midstream, very difficult to catch on most of our clients, but if you wash their perineum and just put on a glove and get the container. Once they start peeing, you stick it underneath there, catch a little bit, you're good to go. We often think we need the container full. There's very few tests that you actually need a full urine container. All you need is a very small amount on the bottom of the jar. Um, please explain to your um, people when they are catching urine and how they need to do that. And my son, when he was really young, he was um, in the bathroom catching a urine sample for um, his doctor, and he came out in a paper cup that he had peed in. He didn't realize that it was a, that he had pee in the jar. But anyway, that was a funny thing when we were young. He came out with this whole cup of, little paper cup of urine, and said, here is my pee, Mom. And I'm like, mm, okay, thank you, but we didn't explain it to him. 
So you may need to explain if somebody is doing that on their own. Don't assume they know what to do. You know what happens when you assume. 24 hour, um, your assessment, you describe the first voiding. So if my first voiding was at six in the morning, then you would um, discard that first void, voiding, collect it for 24 hours, and the last voiding would be that next morning. You don't want to keep that, that urine in that container for that many hours. Um, you save the urine for the remainder of the voiding for the next 24 hours. Usually it's kept in ice and or the refrigerator. Catheter, there's many types of catheters. We've already talked about them. There's a straight catheter, which goes in and out, also called an intermittent catheter. So that means that it's put in, your bladder's drained, and then you get rid of it. And you may be, as a PSW, delegated to do that. So it's used to drain the bladder a single time, then removed, and it may take place a number of times a day. An indwelling or a folded catheter is another name for it. Doctor's orders and states the size of what the catheter is, and it is an inflated bleed, keeps it in place, and this is if you're going to have a catheter for a longer period of time. Use, usually has a leg bag and a night bag. I will put up some videos for you to review regarding catheters and catheter care. Condom catheter we've talked about before. It goes on the outside of the penis, and the tube attaches to the bag. Elastic tape or elastic band secure it in place. Suprapubic catheter, you're going to see, it's above the pubic arch through the abdominal surgery or in, through the abdominal area, and it is surgically put in place, stays in there, and is changed by the doctor or the nurse. So the condom catheter stays on a couple of days, and remember not to wrap the. Um, when you're reading in your textbook, read about condom catheter. You'll want to know some of that for your test. Straight. So straight catheters are used once. Some of your clients will wash them, keep them and use as catheters over and over again. Indwelling catheters are in for about a month and condom catheters are about every two days. Um, and a suprapubic is in for about a year um, and then maybe longer or, um, and a suprapubic catheter, if I have it in, then, of course, then I can have sexual intercourse because not, if I'm a female or a male, often an erection doesn't happen with a catheter and it's, um, of course, um, difficult to have intercourse with a catheter in, indwelling. So often if I'm still sexual act, sexually active and I need a catheter, I'll often have a super pubic catheter put in. UTI, or a urinary tract infection. Now, a urinary tract infection means it could be anywhere in my urinary system. So it could be in my bladder, or it could be in my kidney. So risk causes and risk factors, of course, is infection in the urinary system. Cystitis, cyst, remember, is sac. Itis is inflammation of, so inflammation of the bladder. So if I have a bladder infection, it's actually cystitis. And pyelonephritis. Pila is the pelvic area of the kidney. So if you remember looking at the kidney, you'll see that, that pelvic area is right here on the kidney where the ureter comes down. That is the first place that you will find inflammation of the kidney or a kidney infection. And you'll know if you have a kidney infection, it's like being kicked in the back. Urine is considered sterile until it's out of the body, but microbes can enter and through catheter intercourse, poor hygiene, why often women, especially if they're incontinent at stool, will be sitting in their stool and it can get into their urinary meatus because it's so close. Um, ink, so poor hygiene, incomplete bladder emptying, examination, and decreased fluid intake can cause urinary tract infection. Healthcare, are we at risk in healthcare settings? Well, there's many reasons why. Could be because you haven't gotten enough fluid, you're incontinent, you're um, not getting enough, um, not, not getting to the bathroom in time, many reasons and also many other healthcare providers. Women, of course, because we have that shorter urethra and prostate secretions protect men from urinary tract infection. So you'll see that as women, we have involved, we often have um, urinary incontinence, we have stress incontinence, and men will not be able to pee because their prostate starts to enlarge. Signs and symptoms are urinary frequency, urgency, burning, foul smelling urine, which is called pyorrhea or pus in the urine. 
um, hematuria, dipuria, oliguria, pyuria, there you are, pain on voiding or lower back, fevers, chills, and of course treatment and support, prevention if at all possible, along with increasing fluids. Antibiotics you may be on, and you'll increase your fluids to at least two liters per day. When you're looking at cranberry juice for urinary tract infections, they do work as long as it is um, as long as it, as it is pure cranberry juice, not ocean spray. Ocean spray is full of sugar, and the pure cranberry juice, what it does is stop the microorganisms from adhering to the bladder wall. So that you can excrete them. So if you're looking at what type to buy, it's that terrible tasting stuff in the health food store. Renal calculi. Well, renal calculi are kidney stones. And the risk factors, it's typically white men between the ages of 20 and 40, people who have been on long periods of bed rest, immobility, decreased food intake, or increased um, caffeine, which dehydrates you. So you need to make sure. Often you have cramping inside and back below the ribs, pain, abdominal, thigh, urethra, nausea, vomiting, fever, chills, urinary frequency, urgency, oliguria, dysuria, hematuria, and foul odor. They say that this is the closest that you get to having a baby. So you may see that with your clients are in excruciating pain. They can blast them with ultrasound to break them up. It is best for you to cast them rather than to remove them because when you remove them, they can damage your kidneys. So we want to make sure that that is um, something that is looked after. Prevention, of course, is your best medicine if possible. Pain medication and you will increase your fluids to two to 3,000 milliliters per day to get them out. We are going to strain urine. Make sure you review how to strain urine. May need diet changes once you find out what the um, what these stones are made of, and surgery questions to remove them. Renal failure or kidney disease. Renal failure is the causes are inadequate to no functioning of the kidneys. They have increased toxins and increased water retention, and we call acute is sudden. It's a result of decreased blood flow to the kidneys. Examples would be congestive heart failure, myocardial infarction, profuse bleeding, burns, infection. It's often temporary but can cause death. And it also can become chronic. So the first stage you're going to see is oliguria, less than 400 cc's or milliliters of urine in uh, 24 hours. Usually occurs for a few days. Then we have dysuria, which is increased output of urine, which are diuresis, sorry, which is urine, um, 1,000 to 5,000 in 24 hours, and then your kidneys return to normal. This takes about one month to a year, but can become chronic. Chronic is ongoing. The nephrons are destroyed over years, and usually hypertension, diabetes, infections, um, urinary tract infections, tumors can cause your chronic um, kidney disease. Now, when you're looking at chronic kidney disease, I will not know I have kidney disease until 80 to 90% of my kidneys have been destroyed. So I may not know and I may need dialysis. Signs and symptoms, acute is oliguria and diuresis and chronic. As I said, the signs and symptoms are only when 80 to 90% of dysfunctioning happens. You have dry, itchy, um, brittle skin, mouth is inflamed, stomatitis, remember, bleeding, bruising, hypertension, burning sensation in the legs and the feet. Acute, we have meds, fluid restriction, and diet. In and out will be every hour, and if you have less than 30 ml, you'll report that immediately. Weight every day on the same scale. Oral hygiene will be often because the waste products aren't being cleansed from my blood. Skin care, um, if bedridden prevention and, or prevent infection and blood pressure. Chronic would be exactly the same, but we take the BP in two times, sitting and standing, oils and creams to the skin, rest periods, dialysis, and a kidney transplant. Hopefully I will show you some videos on your dialysis also.